copy written production of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching. I want to show you all where our articles are located on the website. We're in a work in progress. As you can see, this the website. You go over to the blue RCSC column. You go down and you click there. Head down. This gives you your motion, the charter, the rules and measurements. Everything that's blue is clickable. And there are things in each of those. Uh, I'm going to be working with JoLynn to get these up as they come in. Um, I hope maybe she can do like a little dynamite image that says new. I don't know. So um, that's what I got. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. You're, no, thank you for letting me know. Uh, Jean? Yes. Have all the committee members signed in? Talk fast, but a little delay. Looks like he'll join us when he gets here. Okay. So that we're continuing this second phase that we talked about, which is looking at data. So last week we had some great presentations by a couple of the management people about information over kind of the five-year period. I've got some additional information I've received from them that's a little more current. It's got 2022 as well as some even for the current year. But again, the focus today is on information. We want to look at two things primarily. What do users use and what's the uh, utilization of certain facilities? So I, I picked some select items to look at. One that I did not pick was pickleball only because that's going to be a focus of a presentation that Karen uh, McAdam will give on the 9th. So I promise to leave that one for her. And so no discussion of that today. And there's a couple other smaller ones that haven't been discussed or not included in mine, but we can pick them up on the 9th. Once we're done with that, we're kind of then through the second phase that we've talked about, uh, which is looking at data uh, for Sun City. And we're going to then begin brainstorming and looking at alternatives. So we won't be doing that today. I know it's tempting. People look at information and like to do it. Uh, but we won't. Yes? I have a few copies here of the presentations that were handed out last week. I want to ask and make sure all the committee members received them. They're all the Excel spreadsheets. And then if I have any left, I'll pass them. Yes. 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 Do you need one or? I uh, know. Here we are. And everybody else up here has right? there is how to improve the efficiency of scheduling members for golf. 
unless somebody wants to buy a golf position. Probably not. Um, we're going to look at bowling in a little bit of detail because the trends show that that participation by you know, members of membership is down. And pickleball, of course, is one of those ones in the last five years that's, that's gone up. But because of that, we're going to have Karen do a, a separate presentation on pickleball, which deals with member usage and also uh, the facilities that we have. Uh, the other one we'll just look at briefly is tennis. That's another one that's shown uh, a, a rather sharp decline. What? Oh, I'm mean, the tennis uh, representative. Yes. What does that mean? One percent percentage of total what? Huh? Of, of the total activity here. Total activity of everybody. So it's 1.7 million activities, okay. of which 21 percent of them are in golf. Okay. 20 percent are swimming. 20% of is that, is that a person? This, this is the cumulative percentage. So when you get to the first three items, it's 61% of our activity I is in those okay. three events. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The swimming, is that people, members going to use the pool, or is that also club activity in the it's pool? It's everything. Everything that was listed as swimming, which would include both. But generally, when you look at these numbers, whether it's got a few exceptions, you know, if it's got little clubs and stuff, they don't change the numbers dramatically um, when I looked at them. They're, they're pretty small. But I took the biggest number I could find just to show how the facility is being used and why it's important for us. Um, so that adds up to 100 is the percent. This is the cumulative percent. And you'll say that once, you know, and I just picked that, you know, like I put pickleball in here because it's growing. But even still, pickleball only accounts for 40% of our total membership usage. So, so the, our, the, I mean, for the tennis, the for tennis trend downward, where does that come from? You'll see in just a minute, but thank you for that. <laughs> no, nationwide. Huh? Nationwide trend. I'm not interested in nationwide. We're looking at Sun City here. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see that. And it's great that if some other place is going up, but we're not. Steve? Yes? Can you just clarify what cumulative really means? Yeah, 21 plus 20 is 40. Thank you, thank you. And so on down the list. Right. It's just to help you, help us get a sense of kind of 80-20. What are the things that make up the bulk of what we do and then what are the other things? Uh, so the first thing, you know, and I just put one slide in here for golf to go back and look at the history from 2010 to 2022. And, it, and it's, you know, basically continued to, went down a little bit here. Uh, COVID, unlike other indoor events, if it was an outdoor event, COVID seemed to increase participation. More people went golfing um, uh, that you see here. And you, the same thing looked at the peak season. Um, you can see how it went from 214 up to 253 in just a matter of three years. Um, so that's what our members are doing. There are a lot of people are golfing. Okay, looking at bowling. Where's the bowler? <laughs> Our tennis, no. Our tennis. Here to, I'll get to you in a minute. Bowling. bowling. Okay, so I just looked at the data that went back from 1990 to 2022, and you, you can see it. Uh, it's broken out here between Lakeview and Bell, which is the two bowling centers that we have. And there, between those two periods of time, there's a 42% drop in total lines. Um, I took an estimate of what it would, the slope would look like if we took the non-residents on, um, and it looks like it would be closer to a 60% decline. And I'll show you some recent information. Um, thank you for turning the lights off. <laughs> Hopefully that's easier to read for people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what, one of the things I did is I looked at, and I, I just took recent things from year to date, 2023, uh, compared to the prior year, and I took Bell. And the part that was interesting to me is what the total is. So it was 57. It went from 51 to 57, so it actually increased. A lot of the increase, though, took place in guests, which are non-members. Non and now non-members are now making up 30% of the lines um, that are at that facility. If you did the same thing at Lakeview, you would notice that also it went from 45 to 50. But you also notice that guests went up from 26 to 32. That's where most of the growth came from. And at the Lakeview lanes, it's 40% of the lines there are from non-members. 
And if you put both centers together, it basically says we have about 40% of the use of that facility is by non-members. Yes? Are you going to talk about the revenues associated with any of these golf bowling? Uh, I, I have just a little bit, but that wasn't the focus that I have here. Um, I, we can do it for the next meeting. I have no problem doing that. Just, um, but it's not, it's, bowling's not big bucks. I don't know, it's like half a million bucks a year. Bill, do you recall? Am I in the ballpark there? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's about, about a half a million bucks, so you can guess that approximately 200,000 of it is going to be non-members. But they are profitable. They, they're they're break-even. So their revenues cover their expenses. Which is better than most facilities we have here. Most yeah. all. Yeah. Other the, than golf. The ones yeah. That we, yeah, golf is another one that's break-even. Right. I mean, that's how we hope to manage it. <laughs> Maybe a little deficit one year, bigger surplus in another year, and bowling's the same. But they generally are budgeted and operated to be at a break even position, which means it's not using any funds from the pro annual property assessment of 525. None of that is going towards golf or bowling. And, and the, yes. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the increase in guests yes. would be at a higher rate than member pay. Yes, right. I don't know that. I yes. Know. yes it Thank is. you. Jim, jump in. The other thing I would say is they are paying their operating expense. Golf and bowling are being subsidized through the PIV for lots of for lots of things. The I think there's a bowling PIV for the lanes that have to be redone every six to twelve years depending on the use numbers. And we'll have a presentation that by the golf committee at the next but just, just when I said that they're at break even, we're talking operating expenses, right? Yeah. That's not capital. Capital is funded through the PIF program, and that money comes from residents when they move into the community. Then that capital money is used for all capital requirements within Sun City. And, and quite frankly, the reason we're meeting here is to figure out how to spend some of that. Right. <laughs> So, okay, but anyhow, so that's what it says of bowling. I did pick, and, and now we'll switch to tennis. I had a question. Oops. Did, did, um, do you have that, any of that information as to, in the golf, how much is guests? I do. I don't, I don't have it here, but I'd be glad to show it the next time. So if your people are interested in it, I have it. I just. I think it's around 3%. I'm sorry? Well, it's 3% of the uh, uh, totals. So bowling is almost 40% and golf is only 3 Three percent of passes. Yeah, I don't know about the. You know, I, I have it, but the number of rounds it's under ten percent, just off the top of my head. Yeah. Bill, you, you. So yeah, so I think our if you if you want to know guess and outside play. Yeah. Our outside play is roughly twelve percent, and then guess, I believe, is probably another fifteen percent on top of that. Right. So and twenty-five to thirty percent is. But the under, you have to understand what Bill's saying. When he uses the word guest, that means that person can only golf if they're with a member. Right. So I, my brother comes into town, I take him as a guest. Yes. So I, I don't really look at guests as being outside play because it's a, Correct. Uh, it's not a benefit right. of being a member that you can bring it's a friend or relative. It's not a member. And that's true for, quite frankly, all our activities. Yeah. You can yeah. bring that's a guest. Right. Yeah. But with the part that he said that's important, that I think answers your question is Bill said it's 12% that's public play. These are people that can just come in and golf now or something and make a reservation. Yes, sir. I know we're not talking about golf, but since we got Bill here, what is the percentage of um, what I call event use for golf? You know, like tournaments, tournaments and golf events other than tournament play. That's not that. It's not, it's not big. Bill's right. It's either five or less. Yeah. Wow. But um, based on that, I'll put I'll put some additional information together on golf if people are interested. Um, and I just was at the golf advisory committee meeting. We saw some really good information that's shared with the committee. We can obviously share it with you. So and and I can add revenue in there. I guess my point is, is that it's but the bottom line is uh, at Mountain View, we don't have bowling or golf, so none of this really yeah. affects but any of the decisions we're making. Well, actually, Mountain View, we'll come to that. There is bowling at Mountain View. 
There is no. 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 We only have two. Oh, I'm sorry. This is this, this is bowling. 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 We have two bowling centers. Okay. <laughs> sorry. So, okay. I was, I was Next. Oh, you have a question back here. Too? Oh, I'm sorry. I missed one. Yes, ma'am. So the place where people come in from uh, the audience comes in, where are they put in the estimates? There? How many people are in the place? You use it and, and I have that information. Just sit tight. We'll get there. Right. Okay. Okay, let's let's switch to another sport, which would be tennis. And of course, this we have tennis at these three uh, locations. And you can see that from 2014 to 2019, we've gone from like 12,000 to like seven. So there's been a dramatic decrease in the number of uh, people playing. Um, you can see that the capacity just at the Bell Center is like 126,000. But Lakeview is not really a playable court, so that's a really unfair number. Yeah. That, well, what, whether it's playable or not, the only thing I'm showing is this is what we got. And this is the rounds over there. So that's the data, but interpreting data, it's useful um, okay. to, to know that, well, we do have also uh, COVID in there, but no. the Lakeview. No, you don't. Lake no, no, you know. no, 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 okay, that's why we do right. So Lakeview, uh, to her point, is really unplayable. Um, it's there's there's enough significant cracks in there that that people choose not to play there. And so there are people that play. Um, maybe they do use a ball machine. That's one thing you don't hurt yourself uh, like that. But in in Mountain View, I don't know when did we get the pickleball there because that's a big difference with two courts versus uh, a larger uh, a month, larger number of courts. You can't really do much with two, two courts. Okay, it's a social so, thing. Okay, so the first thing is just the to, just to data. It's just yeah. shown yeah. over this period of time it's gone down. Yeah. The reasons, and there might be many, and you just touched on two, but I think pickleball, clearly people are moving from tennis to pickleball. Right? Right. I think that this, one moment, please. Uh, I'll come to you in just a second. Are, are doing that, so that's okay. And I don't mind putting the two charts up together and you'll see one going up and one going down. So I'll, I'll make that as a note to show it. Um, because that pickle, that, that's one of the ones that are actually going in, in, in the but other But the direction. tennis is gonna go down at Mountain View because you've taken half the courts away. Right. This is what he's, I think, what he's right. going to do. The thing well, is, that's so... Not, that's not what happened in 2014 to 2015. It went 603 to 785, it actually increased. Right. In the period of time, yeah. but Bill, do you know it was 2015 that the pickleball courts were in the United States? You're next. No, it's okay. Yeah. You're okay? That's what it's like. Don't let these guys <laughs> over talk you. <laughs> okay, well, okay. Uh, I think you were next then. Well, first of all, for those of you who are kind of criticizing this, this stops at 2019. Right. right. So, for one, we didn't have pickleball. Mountain View at 2019 and before. Yes, I did. Well, okay, we just 2019, but how many years has it been there? And then as far as the Lakeview course, those numbers. Are Could somebody course, open that back door, please? What, what year did they start deteriorating where people can't use them anymore? This is four years later than that last data there. So I, I know from my tennis friends, they don't use that course because of the being down. But Okay. Let's, okay. Let's That's a good point. What I don't want to do is speculate on what the data is. I'll take the action item. I'll get okay. the pickleball data, the tennis data, put them on one slide. We can talk about it instead of us kind of guessing what it yes. is. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So my only comment kind of goes with yours. What I like here, about when you look at 2019, were the courts at Lakeview usable? I have no idea. I'm not a tennis player. No. Because if they were usable up to then, then your numbers were accurate. Well, where were they? Where did they stop being usable? Good question. Well, that's why I says I'll, I'll put some data together and I'll get somebody who I know is pretty good at knowing the pickleball numbers. I think I know somebody for tennis, and we can vet some of these questions and see if we can come to an answer. Uh, but we don't have to speculate today. Yes. Sir. So, Jeff, could you explain uh, the bell capacity, 126,000? I, I actually took all this information from a presentation that was done 
um, back in 2021. And this was done by somebody uh, in the tennis group. And all I did was copy and paste it and put it up here. I, I, I didn't create these numbers, nor did I run it other than saying uh, we have a conclusion here. Uh, but I'd be glad to share it with you. I'm just saying that if we're looking at the total capacity usage at its highest point in 2014, about yeah. 12,000, right. that's a, if they could have 126,000 people, hours, or whatever they're mm -hmm. using here, right. that puts that percentage is uh, less than 10%. Right there, 9%. Oh, yeah. 9%. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, so. The, the takeaway from this, and attribute some of it to Lakeview's quality of the course, but obviously somebody still thought it was okay. <laughs> um, and what the utilization numbers is, and I can break those off for the next time. I don't have it here, but again, I don't want to speculate and guess on things I don't have good facts for at the meeting. Yeah. But those are good points that we need to address. Because we've, we've looked at this before in the Long Range Planning Committee, and what we've run into is forgetting that there are certain times of the day when it's 115 right. that it's not a usable right. Every facility. activity that we have has a peak demand period. Whether it's golf or bowling or tennis, I agree. We'll look at that. Right. And I didn't put utilization rates here because we didn't have a chance to look at them in any detail. But the numbers are available. We'll look at them. Okay. The, ne the next thing I just looked at, as I said, is I'll, I'll take our recreation centers, uh, Newton, um, and I just said, uh, how are we using it this year? But you know, what percentage of the total rec centers is getting the activities? And of course, Bell's is 29% of the activity uh, with Fairway, Manhattan, Sunbell. Then you see Lakeview and Mountain View, which I've highlighted. And of course, I'm wondering, do the oldest centers show the lowest member use? For example, does somebody say, at Lakeview, I do not like the fitness center there, so I go to Bell or I go to Fairway, because they're bigger, newer, nicer. Mm -hmm. And that would be me as an example. I'll go to one of those two. Yeah, it's but, easily uh, skewed, though, yes. based on the number of clubs assigned to a center. Yeah. You can have okay. Fairway with, I don't know, 30 clubs. This does not include clubs. OK. This is basically, it, it's things that are in that building, which is fitness center, and swimming, the spa, the walking pool, okay, uh, that stuff, right? It does not include the metal shop, the wood okay. shop, all that, all that kind of stuff. I left the clubs out of this. Wow. I, I have information on club, but I didn't have enough time to analyze and look at it. But I'd be glad to uh, show it at the next meeting. Not, not a problem. But just in terms of that usage, so you can just see where these two are. And of course, one of the focus um, of this committee is to look at what are alternatives. That we do with these with these two centers. Okay, so now let's kind of drop down from the, the global picture, and I just gave you a taste of it because there's lots of lots of pieces to it, um, and just look at Mountain View. So at uh, Mountain View, the first thing I did is said, okay, let's just take a look at the building, and I, I was just interested for two, for the total year 2002. What, what are the activities here? Well, no big surprise. It's fitness, it's pickleball, and it's swimming, which is pretty consistent with other centers, right? Practically swimming and, and fitness are one of the top three um, that we have. Uh, and this is, this is no different here. The other thing is, there's some other things. So that when we're thinking about what to do, we, we need to make sure we deal with members that are using these three big categories. That's the takeaway. And the other thing is, is we have a few things like horseshoes or mini golf or uh, tennis courts that are really small, right? So we should think how to meet those requirements, but without maybe spending a lot of money. Yes, ma'am. When you started out, I asked about if there was club activity in that and the swimming. Yes. And you said it's all usage. So it does all usage mean clubs? And if it does or doesn't, does the swim pool total include just members going out to swim or in clubs that use the pool for their activity? Uh, this one where it says swim pool, this is the definition of the statistics. So this one included the Aqua Fitness Club. Okay. Was it, so it, this total for swimming includes these three categories. Okay. Okay. So that's general, it's children, and it's the club. 
they're kind of, you know, but of the total, these are the monthly numbers, right? This is the total. Those numbers so it's 24,000. 24, 21 is just general people using the facility. For aqua fitness, those numbers are way low. Way low. Well, way low. that's what's reported. So that's all I got. So, well, okay. Yes? The yeah, aqua fitness numbers are way low, but any golf has been unplayable for you the last year. Yeah. Okay. So, 73 yeah. is impossible. Uh, okay. I, I, I think that is probably true for a number of things, and I that's accepted. Right. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Okay. Ladies first. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Well, and I could say mini golf, then you don't have it broken down by club use versus member use. So I could say you argue your point with the swimming pool is we don't show how much our members, our club numbers may be as close as your aqua fitness club numbers, but not. Right. They might be, you just don't know. And right. there's no one there to check in. So we actually don't know all the time right. how many people are using that golf course. Right, yeah. Okay, that's true. Fair enough. Yes? Yeah, I was just going to say that for mini golf, because I go on the mini golf club, at Bell, I mean, excuse me, at Mountain View, there's really no check your facility unless you are using the honor system. So right. we thought those numbers were soft based right. on the amount of people that used to play it. I'm not talking about now, it's, it's a right. disgrace, but back in the day when people could use it, we, we saw that the numbers didn't really actually. Okay. okay, so one of the things to keep in mind is materiality, right? Not, not pretty yeah, early for right. today, but when we get into brainstorming alternatives. Yeah. And let's say that some of these weaknesses that, that have been identified are true. Okay, when we do our analysis, take this number and multiply it by five. Does it really change our decision making? I'm just brainstorming here. That's what we're going to need to do later. All data is subject to some noise in it yes. and some problem. What we need to do is look at it from a materiality point of view. When we look at um, mini golf, is it going to come anywhere close to what swimming is? Even if we double the number, not even close. So when we get into looking at alternatives, and I'm saying that now so that when a number of you are already working alternatives, so I'm pretty excited to see them when they come. But you need to be able to address that, right? What, what, what's the number today? And because of some reason the course isn't fit right or we don't track it, whatever. Okay, double the number. Does that change, does that change the story? Does that change the justification that we're going to use? Um, and feel free to do that. I'm encouraging you to do that because I know not all numbers are correct when you're gathering this kind of data. Yes? So. I'm kind of I'm just curious with the pickleball thing. So until this year, when somebody would walk into the Mountain View pickleball courts, there's a sheet of paper and you put your RCSC number. That's it. So how did how did you come up with general and club numbers? That's that's the data that the, the center submitted. Bill, can you add to that the process? I, I don't know what. I mean, this just comes from those reports that you sent me, right? All the utilization. The this is just a snapshot of The sign-in sheet yeah. has club. Yeah. But yeah. It, it's but new this year. Right. That's in, 20, in 2022, mm -hmm. there was not that option. Right. In 2022, you just put your RCS in. Okay. 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 This goes back to what I just said. This is the best data we have. Okay. Right? I'm just curious. So I can't make it lower. I can't make it higher. I could always make it higher for trying to do something better. Uh, but yes, ma'am. But, but it, we, have, we have had to sign in with the monitor two years ago. I think it was like two years ago, Bill, when we started that. Yeah, I think it was. Now, yes. for, for Aqua Fitness, okay. what we have is people can park in the back parking lot and walk in, check in with the club, because they still have to stop and sign in with the club people. And that's the numbers that I get. And then they go and pull other people will park in the front parking lot and then they'll go past the monitor and if they remember, they'll sign in. But there's nothing that makes them stop there to sign in. They have to sign in with the club monitor. It's basically the honor system is what you're describing. It's remembrance as well. So, <laughs> so this is really good discussion because we've talked about what the shortcomings of the data could be. When we get into looking at alternatives and somebody says, I want to build A to meet B, we can understand that B might be a little bit higher or a little bit lower, and, and based, but we can use our judgment to do that in terms of materiality. But what That's what I was getting. But what it does 
discussion here is we have we need to have a better way to sign in that Mountain View oh, yes. for any sport. Yep. 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 Now it, whatever the system is, it fails. Yeah. Bring on that absolutely. Because yeah, I can say the Aqua Fitness is now it's four and three hundred. I have the data. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, and one of the things as we as we move forward is we do want to get better data so that we can make better decisions. Really, the data collection bill, correct term, really swag. The first real good swag at it was 2022. Um, everything else was extrapolation, and, and uh, then 2023, and you know, by 2024, we're all going to have ear tags. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, and then just again, I always like to try to put some things in context. So I just took swimming and fitness as an example and ranked them with our centers. And of course, you can see that Lakeview, Mountain View, um, and Fort Oaks are our three oldest rec centers at the uh, smallest number of swimming versus, say, Bell all the way up here at you know, Seventh Avenue. And the facilities are different. I get that. But just to keep things in context. Fitness centers, the same thing. Bell, of course. Um, it's, it's the largest number with Sundial, Fairway, uh, and Marionette. These are all pretty nice uh, fitness centers. When you get down here, not so much. But and then here's pickleball. What these two played. I just threw that in there. Okay. So it's kind of interesting if you look at Mountain View's pickleball at 12,000, Marionette at 57,000, 20 courts in Marionette. Marionette, pardon. Uh, Mountain View is seven courts. Yeah. So on seven courts, that's what, 65 times differential you think should be less at Bellevue playing with less courts yeah. oh. compared to oh. 20 courts of Marinette. I'm not, I'm not drawing a conclusion as one. I'm just saying this is what's reported at the moment, right? When Karen's talk, she'll give you how, what it is like, the number of courts and people play it, and what it is during peak time, less and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just teeing it up in terms of a broad, this is what we currently have. Now we can change it by adding more, of course. No, no, I'm, just, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that you would yeah. expect there to be less at Mountain View because there's less courts. Of course. Than there is proportionally right. to what there is of 20 right. courts. And Bell's got a bigger pool than Oakmont, so yeah, they're going to have more people there. I, yeah. that's, that's okay. This is just to tell you, this is, you know what our facilities are, this is the activity that's in them. It's just to put things in context. Okay. So then, the other thing I looked at was um, the auditorium usage at the Mountain View Center. Uh, and this again came from the report, and no big surprises here. The two biggest users of the auditorium is the Players Club, uh, which is 68%, and then showy movies. And then there's a half a dozen items of much, much smaller, and it could be other kind of things. But this is the current usage that's at the auditorium. Uh, at the auditorium there. Do any yes. of those other clubs, other than the ones that are in yellow, use other facilities for their activities? I do not know. I only looked at what was this. Well, the the, the data is available. We could look at it. Yes. Tammy, Tammy some dance. Could Tammy? Yes. Can you yes. We were, we use Marinette and Sundial for our show, but we're interested in a performing arts center for our show. That's it, but you're not currently not using in, the auditorium now. Because this is about Mountain View, and that's why your percentage is so low there. And if it was no one ever wanted to use Mountain View. Right. <laughs> the seniors Except the, the players have been there since they like years. Elementary school. We, we can look at these activities at each of the auditoriums, and I'll tee up what the auditoriums are in a few minutes, but I didn't do an analysis on it. This is just to tee it up. But we can, we can add that. That's why we're discussing it. Steve, to answer your question, the softball club is on there. I think that was a main one. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not really relevant to how much they could use it because they're using other facilities. Right. 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 This is just this particular location. If this if this auditorium disappeared, this activity would have to go into another auditorium. That's the only thing you probably take out of this. It doesn't say what else is done somewhere else. That, that, that doesn't answer that. So then the next thing I did is I got some information from the Players Club, and now we'll focus on that in, in a little more detail. And it took what the attendance was from 2016 up to the current, and it shows the number of performances that they did during the season and the average um, audience during that. 
One of the things you'll notice is pre-COVID, right, you'll see the number is 4,000, 5,000, 5,000, and the average is about 4,700. COVID hit beginning in 20, and of course the season was canceled here, and then we're starting to ramp back up again at 12 and 18, but we've never gone back to the, we've not yet reached the 21. So this is just a current profile of what we have for shows and what the attendance is. So it tells us. Okay. Yes, sir. It, it, uh, for the people's being able to relate to this, when you add that up to those seven years, there were 27,854 people came to place, just audience. Mm -hmm. 27,000. That's a, a remarkable number. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm confused on that. Though. Yeah. He's just adding a cumulative attendance up for that period of time. And so can you, Bill, address the change that went on at least 2016 to 2018? You had 39, went to 54, 54 two years. Something was increasing. What was, do you have any idea what that well, cause was? A lot, of, a lot of it depends on what we produce and how well it's received. Uh, like for Mountain View, there were times that aren't reflected there because it was prior to that. When we had a musical, we had 500 chairs in that book, and every one of them was filled. In general, you see a building, I think, except for the outline of 26, 16, 17. And then we're a course, building before COVID, it just managed to spread. And, and now it's a struggle like any other thing, getting back after COVID. Right. But it's yeah. part of it starting to pick up real right. well. Okay, thank you. So then, uh, also Bill was kind enough to give me a worksheet with this information on it, um, but I wanted to get an idea. One of membership, these, this was a guesstimate that Bill gave me in terms of membership that's in the Players Club. And if there's better information, give it to me and I'll update this. This is clearly a guesstimate, but at, at one point in time it was around 500, and it's down somewhere 125, 150, I don't know. Bill, some my yeah. ballpark there. Okay. Um, the next thing I, I did is I says, okay, uh, let's just take a look at usage in weeks. And these were the three shows that were put on in 2022. And you know, I'm talking to Bill and look at his worksheet. It says that for every performance that they, they do, they have six weeks of rehearsals. So six, 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 and then you got the shows. And the shows are six to seven nights a week uh, during that period. So this is the number of weeks that are consumed during the season uh, for rehearsals and for the shows, 21. And then I took the peak season, everything's a peak in our place, <laughs> and said it's about 28 weeks and that would be 70, 21 would represent about 75% of the peak period usage of the auditorium. That's, that's what it says here. The shows are over a uh, two weekend period. It'd be okay. three, it's six to seven over a two week period rather than a one-week period. Okay, okay, so this says one week. So if you've got three days over there and three days over here, we'll call it six days, we'll call it a week. Okay, close enough? That's, that's how I interpreted it. Okay. I didn't want to get too crazy here, but okay. Um, However, it is not used during the four days between performances. Right, and we'll talk about what it is used for in a minute. Right. So, yeah, I don't want to say that it's used 100% of the time. That would not be a proper interpretation of the data. It just says that there needs to be some time for them to do it. Within, within a week, these six weeks, I don't know if they're rehearsing one day, one hour a day, eight hours a day, 12 hours. It probably is all those. Um, is what it, could someone grab that door, please? So then, uh, the next thing, I, this is just repeating from the previous slide that said during uh, peak period, it was about 75%. And then I says, okay, what's the attendance? So now I took the attendance and utilization and put it on one slide. And I said here uh, that the shows generate this kind of uh, attendance, which is what it did the last year. And then I said, the question really becomes is, with COVID being behind us, will the 32 jump back up to 47? And there's a lot of things that go into it, including the type of shows people like to go to and all kind of other things. But the number is somewhere I think at the low end is this and it's probably up here so you get, to, you get a sense of what a range would be. So then I said given that, I said the club, 
I'm thinking the attendance is 32 at the bottom end and 47 maybe at the top end. Just as, uh, and then I says, yeah, when the player club isn't using everything, of course we show movies in that same room during the same period of time. That's the single biggest use. If you look at the other things, there just tend to be meetings, which are pretty small. But movies, there's, there's quite a bit. You know, so the best data I, I got on movies was at about 5,500. And I said, you know, it may, maybe it goes up to 8,000. So then I said, well, you got 4,700, you got 8,000. Maybe we now have 12,000 or 13,000 members participating in those two activities in a year. And the number could be a little bit later, could be a little bit bigger. But then I says, when it relates to the total activity of all of ours, which is like 1.7 million counts swimming golf, da, 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 you get 13,000. And then the, the question becomes, the, what was in there was a performing arts, arts center was estimated to cost 12 million bucks. So one of the questions that the team, one of the reasons we were formed is to look at this. Given this and given this, is this the right thing to do? We're not going to answer that today. This, I'm putting this question up because this is something we're going to get to during the alternatives phase. And there's a lot of alternatives that we can look at. The next thing I looked at, what somebody asked, was auditoriums. And I just listed the big ones that, we, that are here. And you can see, according to Mountain View, is one of our, is the second largest at about 7,000 square foot. And of course, Sundial is at nine. Well, this is just total utilization, which is numbers like 30 to 50 percent. 50 percent of Oakmont being the highest, the rest are in the 30s. Uh, if I break this out into peak periods, you'll see that you know, we do peak periods for auditoriums. The number of utilization goes up because nobody uses them in the summer. We all get that. Um, but I can, we can get that information and look at it. I would like to add that to it so we get a better granular look um, at what the things might be. But what it does say is low utilization, even if these numbers went up, uh, is, there, is there an opportunity for the Players Club? Is there some other alternative out there? And I said Players Club, but it could be any club. It could be dance, it could be music, it could be how do we meet the needs of all our clubs? Uh, can we look at how to do that? Now, I'm teeing that up for when we get done with data and we look at alternatives. But, when people are presenting alternatives, they need to start thinking of this. Here's a building, here's what it costs, here's how many people use it, right? right. And go through the different things. And we'll discuss pros and cons, because nothing's black or white, as they say, right? Uh, Bill, before you move on, the, the uh, occupancy, you had well, explain yes. the, diff the slash in the 198 versus 90 in the occupancy. I, I don't really understand that particular okay. call. I copied this from a okay. report, but John? 198 is just seats. Uh, 90 is with tables. 90 is with tables. tables. Got so if you set up with tables, that's 90. Seats, okay. seats, seats and, and tables. And Thank you. OK. And I yes, know this isn't really, but this has been a thorn in our side. Marinette Auditorium is not wood floors. That's right. So we can't tap in there. Um, and it has four oh. walls to there. Yeah, and that's every one of these have their Pluses and minuses okay. that make, it make sure it feasible it or unfeasible. I get that. Yeah. And that's what we need to now get out <laughs> on the floor <laughs> uh, so that we know. But this is just, I want to just introduce the topic that this is something we'll look at. Yeah. And whether it's other points that I brought up today, we're going to have to drill into it and get a little more granular with the data to see this, this, is it got merit. And four might be a reason to say, no, take that off the table. That's not going to work. So we'll get there. One other thing that your yes, sir. thing does it show. In 2022, players paid the RCSC over $11,000. Yes. Okay. From an RCSC yeah. report. And so you can go yeah. on the check and make sure it's right. Yeah. Uh, so I think that came up with some of the other clubs earlier. So we have, uh, we have the revenue numbers. I didn't put them in here. But I'll put them in and we'll look at them the next time. But yes, that number is correct. Okay. I, uh, I've seen that. But we'll put up bowling and golf and all the others. Just to put, again, I think it's useful to do that because it puts it in context. Well, and it makes a big difference if you're 
how you look at things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's not like we're doing free money. And, and finally, you know, to, to tee it up as we begin to look at alternatives in our, in our next phase when we get to it um, in a few weeks from now, one of the things is just that the proximity of what our centers are, right? And I, I just looked at, I said, from, from Mountain View, if you went the fairway, it's one mile. If you go to Oakmont, it's two miles. If you go to Lakeview, it's three miles. And of course, you could keep going north and you'd, you'd be at Sundial and Bell and Marionette, right? So when we're looking at alternatives, is there an advantage, some advantage of looking at all the clubs and activities that we can get some synergies by some of these clubs that are the centers that are so close together? I have no idea what the answer is. All I only know is it's something to look at. So, and with that, that concludes what I have to discuss this afternoon. Great. John, anything else? Any questions, comments, discussion? So I'm going to look at revenue. Uh, we're going to be having an in-depth just to recap some of the things we talked about. I'll, I'll get revenue for the clubs. Uh, we're going to be drilling into pickleball in great detail, but I'm going to let Karen do it since she knows the subject matter very well. Um, and she asked her to talk about not only the evolution of it and how it's gone, but which, what are some indicators it, as it goes forward? Is it going, is it, are we at the top or is it going to continue to grow? Is it a function of just adding more courts? Uh, we need to get that up on the table so that we know uh, completely what the story is there. And I'll, and I'll compare it to tennis. You know, it'll be easy to look at it. There are some good points brought up. When did pickleball start? When did tennis go down? Is that shift from one to another taking place? How big is it? I think it's important to understand. I was kind of interested. That was a good conversation about that. Um, John? I guess the other thing, is, in terms of what I focus on, is what I call the cost per unit. Uh, so everybody's activity is an equal utility because they enjoy it. All right, that's what we're all about. Right. So the only variable is how much does it cost <laughs> for you to provide for the uh, center to provide you the UDL. Uh, you saw 1.7 million units, and that cost us 24 million dollars. Okay, and so as you look at the the activities, you have to look at the board. Basically. We have to look at the total population and trying to maximize the number of utils for the money that you, you, your money uh, buys. And so that's kind of where I, you know, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to say I'm cheap. <laughs> You're official. Frugal would be a good word. <laughs> uh, but I do look at the, the cost and say, okay, when I look at an alternative, uh, is it a Cadillac? Is it a Chevrolet? Is it a Yugo? Right. Uh, and if it's, you know, one of those three, and if it's something that if the community benefits from greatly and there's a huge amount of use, it should be a Cadillac. If it's something that, you know, you and I get together and enjoy a cup of coffee and talk investments, it, it might be a Yugo. So, you know, I, I'm just telling you my personal point of view. Yes? Is there any way that we have could get data sometime? Is everybody that pays their dues in Sun City gets a, a, a rec card? Yes. Do we actually know how what percentage of all of our residents use our facilities? Oh, yeah. Uh, Bill, I don't know. You know what? No. I don't know it off the top of my head. But the ASU focus group, yes. there's a chart in their report, and I can't recall what the data was, but it was like 30. A, a third. Yeah, I think it's about third. Thank I, you, Bill. I, I think you're right. I think it's about a third of the 40,000 in round numbers yeah. um, mm -hmm. that use our to use any activity, right. yeah. clubs, yeah. swimming, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So two thirds do not. Yeah. 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 One important caveat yeah. to that is. How many of those people who were choosing to buy at Sun City were influenced by the availability of these items, whether they ever chose to use them or not? I don't have any facts, purchase. but I think it's everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a personal feeling. Well, the ones that don't use it are the, yeah. the elder. Right. 
Well, just to spin off of that. Like, when I say, oh, I'll, 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 I'll get you one second. Uh, uh, Jim, we'll do you from first, the, and then you. From the ASU meeting that I was at, what they said was about a third of the people never leave their house because they're aged and immobile. Mm -hmm. Another third don't decide to participate, and then we have about a third that do this participate. I think it's a little, actually a little less than. A third. I think that's a good summary of what the report says. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, I just put enough what Susan was saying, but there are intangibles. Oh yeah. I hope we also also include and understand oh, yeah. the bigger picture then and I love the numbers. Well, they buy a house know, I mean, mm -hmm. massage. We see people that walk into the rec centers all the time yeah. that are with a real estate agent going, yeah. Wow. I mean I go to Bell a lot and I, I, I hear that and of course I get a chance to talk can, to people also, and how great the place is. <laughs> can I also ask, Yes. Uh, I'm seeing this great group of people with just all these different interests. And I'm, I don't quite understand why Pickleball gets its own day, its own. Tennis uh. <laughs> <laughs> agrees with you. <laughs> why, would you like your own day? <laughs> no, I'm just asking for yeah. everyone. Uh, I'm only I'm talking about my interest. Well, I'm one of the reason okay. <laughs> well, the, the reason Pickleball for me <laughs> was was centered out is because if you looked at the original <laughs> plan, it's in three phases. Right, phase one, right. phase two, phase three. Phase three is pickleball for twenty million dollars. I sure want to drill into why we're spending twenty million bucks. And maybe in twenty years, but yeah, okay. No, it's not. It's ten years. It's five. It's it's a lot of money. We should understand what that is. Right? Because it's a big number. If it's if it's five hundred thousand dollars, we probably won't deal with it. Yes, Bill. So if I if I could clarify please, that the twenty million is never out. We said pickleball clearly is a growth, and so you know, I think we knew, when the board knew at that time, that pickleball yeah. was going to be a part of that. Right. But the 20 was for anything that yeah. had 100,000 square foot of space would accommodate, and it was based on whatever utilization plans we had at the time that we were about to make that decision. So it really wasn't okay. allocated as official. Good, good, good yeah, point. Thank fine. you very much. But anyhow, that was originally in our it, it, it was something big, and so we should really like kick the tires on it. <laughs> yes, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this. Oh, 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 no. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, no. Two things are bothering me. Number one, this is supposed to be a committee that's going to make re re recommendations to the board. Yeah. Correct. So far, we have not acted like a committee yet. And the other thing is, I don't believe a board member should be given a presentation on pickleball to the committee that's going to recommend back to the board. Mm -hmm. I think that's wrong. Okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. We just had a board member here do just that. I know. I, I, I wasn't making a recommendation. Yeah, I'm only presenting information. Who's giving data? Who's giving data? data? Well, yep. Gene. Don't my uh, what? Jean had her hand up first. Okay. Yes. No, this is something that the co-chairs have been discussing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that has not been formally done. But okay. uh, there's a number of people with a number of things that we thought, well, if this is going to cost a lot of money, we should see if it's going to do something. Yes, ma'am. This gentleman did not represent any particular club. The That's right. The game was across the board for everything. So while he sits in this chair, he represented this presentation, it wasn't self-serving. I'm going to go. We're going to kill me now. I love pickleball. I, I play pickleball. Pickleball's presentation will be self-serving. I get it. We need to hear it. We need to see the numbers. We need to understand the argument. And I get your point that maybe it shouldn't be someone who's on this committee making that presentation. But this gentleman did not offer us anything self-serving yeah. in any way. I had no problem. Probably. Just so that you know, I don't play pickleball. <laughs> because I wear this, I never will. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just, uh, but I just want to make sure if there's a big topic. We also talked about at the next meeting giving tennis and pickleball this comparison and analysis. That was a good question, right? and we should get get it out so that we have a better understanding of what that is. Yes, sir. I'm a little confused. We said that June 9th 
Karen was going to present on pickleball, but we did not say that she was presenting with a bias, did we? No. No. No, she's going to so be. I, um, I right. think there's a concern here that she's coming to sell on pickleball. Not, I don't think it's going to be anything it's, different. It's strictly. Did, remember, a board member uh, right. of information. This whole phase that we're in is data. Right. Whether it's me or John or Karen or any other, we're not here to put a recommendation to, as a solution. That is going to come from you and others when we're done. But when you when the others are talking about alternatives, they need to use the data either to support or not support whatever it is. And, and John, can I go back to the clarification point that Gene was asking about? In the beginning, I heard you say June 9th was a pickleball presentation. Yes. Gene says that's not on her calendar, so there's some right. clarity. We're, as I just said, we're discussing putting that on the June 9th. Okay. So I'm giving you a verbal what I think will be an update. Yes, ma'am. This is, uh, since I've been on this, it's been very confusing to me. This is supposed to be uh, about Mountain View, not, so far it's a pickleball committee. A pickleball committee. Okay, I, under, I understand, it's been covered some player stuff, but, you know, it's like every time the concern seems to be pickleball. Okay. Now they, I, I saw that they were going to uh, put maybe some more pickleball courts over at Lakeview because of tearing it down. Okay, all right. Any other club, if something is torn down, it's or it's out of you know not being used for a while, they don't put them someplace else and say, "Well, we're going to put you a new place here." Why are we going to the expense of putting um, pickleball additional pickleball courts? <coughs> when it's going to be, sure, it's an inconvenience, but a lot of times we put up with a lot of inconveniences here. Well, one, one of the reasons that the committee is here to is to develop alternatives to exactly that point. Should we put up the football for So that's it. one of the things that's no, on the table. Okay. Wow. To me, that's added expense when our focus needs to be on Mountain View. They don't need to put money into additional pickleball courts, sure, it's going to be inconvenient. Well, you know, look at all the people on the lake. They're inconvenienced by not having a lake and they live there. How long are they inconvenienced? Yeah. So pickleball is going to be inconvenienced by not having so many courts. Why go through the expense when this is not about lake view? It's about mountain view. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. okay, and just to clarify something. I didn't present anything here except broad numbers on pickleball. Oh, I know. No, okay, know I just wanted to correct you on yeah, that. Yeah, you did not. That what, what I, the only part that I really wanted to focus on was the players' club. Right. The other stuff was to create an umbrella or put context to what we're doing, <clears throat> right? So that when we're talking about Mountain View, you've got to remember where it's at in things. And if you wanted to get more swimmers, you might need a better swimming pool. So things like that we'll have to think through. But this is to set the stage for that discussion. Yes, ma'am. Okay, to the point of committee, um, sorry John, but I'm putting you on the spot here. In the Independent this week, you had a commentary in which you glowingly told all of Sun City that our number one priority is to create a, players, a place for the Players Club. And that our, in our charter is Mountain View and Pickleball <coughs> at Lakeview, which I haven't even heard of yet. How is that in our charter? And you said that twice in your commentary that our, our important thing to be doing is pick a ball at Lakeview. I don't know where that came from, but it didn't come out of this committee. And neither did, you know, when you keep saying we can't talk about alternatives, we can't choose any of this stuff yet. And then you're saying in a master thing at some, well, I think people should be able to hear. So I think, you know, to say in something to all of Sun City that our number one thing to do is to create a performing arts center for the Performing Arts Club. I thought that's what we were supposed to be deciding as a committee. That's why we're looking at numbers. That's why we're supposed to be making this, that decision. Are we going to create one here? Are we going to create one somewhere else? Are we going to create one at all? And for you to go into your commentary and flat out say, this is what we're doing, I'll just seems non-committee. I'll, I'll have to take a look at, at, at that period. I don't, don't recall those exact words. The charter of the committee was to strategic alternatives. I'm sorry, could you talk about because I can barely hear you. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the charter of the committee 
was to look at alternatives to option two with pickleball courts at Lakeview. Very, very clear. Mountain View. Uh, yeah, option two is Mountain View. Yeah. Option two is Mountain View with pickleball courts at Lakeview. Those two were connected. That was part of the motion that caused the strategic alternatives committee. Okay. Yeah. If you go back and read the minutes, you will see that is the, okay. that is the charter. Now, you know, in terms of how we get there, and you know, I'm sorry that that article offended you. I thought it was positive uh, because I think the work that's being done here is very positive. Um, but as far as how we get there, we all have to have a common understanding of the data. And that's what we've worked our butts off to, to, to gather. We're not asking you to go out and gather data. You know, we're trying to go through reams and reams of stuff and, and boil it down in an unbiased way so that you, the committee, can look at it. And you, the committee, after you've done looking at uh, alternatives and recommendations, and the data can say, hmm, I like this one best, that one worse, I hate that. You know, and that, that's okay. That's okay, but that's, it's a long road, but it's a very, very important undertaking. I, I totally understand that concept. I'm just saying, last week, in this meeting, I said to you, I really believe the Performing Arts Center is a positive thing for Sun City yes. and that we are spending a lot of time on all of this rather than coming up with alternatives based on the data we already have. And you said, well, so far we don't even know that there's going to be a Performing Arts Center. And until we make this decision, it's just all based on this. And then you go into the paper and flat out say, our number one priority is to build a Performing Arts Center. So. There's Mike, you know. I'm looking at that. I'm looking at that. Maybe a fair criticism. Hmm? The, the only reason I brought up is how many people use it because early on we were comparing how how many items per households in Sun City, how many courts should we have, or whatever. Right. And I, and I just didn't think that, that was a good standard to measure by just because we have X number of houses. Okay. I thought it would be more like we said mm -hmm. of using the third of the people that use this. That's right. that's a more realistic number. So that's, that's the type of thing. Where, okay, well, some info facts will be presented. Right. And just like my analysis here, people said, I'd like to see revenue and I'd like to see a comparison. I get it. Well, so that's yeah, the no, purpose. That's Next right. time we'll, we'll show it again. Yes, ma'am. I have not seen any of the people, but I feel I feel that there was a bias on the performing arts center that you presented because I think what happened is you said, we're not going to guesstimate, we're not going to guess, we're not going to guess. Well, let me see this players club, we're going to guesstimate. The entire thing was, we're going to guess and think that it's going to be more. I mean, that's what you presented. So the whole time you kept saying, we're not going to guess, we're not going to guess, but then when it came up to the players club, it was like, we're going to guess that in the next future it's going to go here and here and here and here. That whole Actually, it that wasn't a guess. The number that was in there for the Players Club of 4,700 was the assumption being that we could, we could get the attendance back to the pre-COVID levels. But it was assumption. And the whole time uh, you I said guess. we're not assuming, we're not going to assume, we're not going to well, assume until you got to that slide and then you're like, we're going to assume that we're going to get back. I we, but I felt like that was a little bit of a bias toward Performing Arts Center, and I really think people need to think about why people buy in certain areas, and when they buy in certain areas, and if they're in Mountain View, and they're saying, we have a rec center right here, and this is what we have, and we have this pool, and we have this, and we have this, no. uh, and I didn't see anything written down about lawn bowling. It's one of the grassed lawn bowling facilities there, and there's very few that are grassed, and there's like money that I think is a lot of for those certain things, and there's like certain things that you didn't even address in that. And I think I think people need to think about when people purchase a, a home mm -hmm. in this community, they're purchasing it knowing that that yeah, is there yeah, and that's what's out. available and that's yeah. what they're having. And to say there's not going to be a hot tub at Mountain View because we might be tearing that out, we're not going to fix that, and now there's no hot tub there or be able to use it, that's very sad when somebody's bought there and thinking, right. okay, we've got a hole in a hot tub. Right. And a this and a that, but it's not being fixed because they may be tearing that right. down, and replacing, or doing something right. else. 
And not even but, know. But I'm going to take exception with the one point that you took on the Players Club. The current attendance is 3,200. Prior to COVID, it was 4,700. I put both numbers. You, the audience, when you're making an understanding, have the range of values that you think would be appropriate for your decision making. I didn't tell you which one to use. I'm just showing you that there's, like some of the other discussion, the numbers are not always accurate or there's things to it. So I gave you a range and, that, and that's, that's it. But the range was based on the facts of what the attendance was. And you had said yes, before sir. not to guess, and that's like... That's not a guess. It was an actual number. Well, it's an actual number. It I showed it. It could get back up to that. It could, it could, it could or it might not. Right? Can I, yes, sir. Can I use your harmonica? <laughs> What's that? Can you use your harmonica? I've had my hand up so long, the blood yeah. just ran down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would... I think everybody here has to understand that what we're tasked with, and we can have different opinions on exactly what it is, but in general we agree. What we're tasked with is a very, very difficult issue. It was not of our making, but here we are with it. It's a tough nut to crack. And I personally will be very surprised if we can crack it, but I'm willing to put in the time to do it. <coughs> But before we break into tribal warfare, because everybody in here has an interest, and that interest is primary to that person and, and their activities, but, which usually means disregard the fourth one, <laughs> we have to be conscious of having a much, much bigger picture that we have to deal with. And that just makes the nut that we have to crack even harder. We, as the oldest retirement community almost in the world, but certainly in Arizona, have a reputation, and this has been written up in the national magazines, of Sun City is God's waiting room. You go there to die. Now, we know that's not a crack one, but a lot of people out there so I go with you. So overriding all of the uh, problems that we have with Mountain View and pickleball and however Lakeview fits into the situation, we have to, if we're going to continue to exist, we have to sell homes. Right. We cannot sell homes if we don't market what we have. And it's hard to compete with the shiny new retirement communities that have everything when we're God's waiting room. Right. So we have to have things that other communities can't have, don't have. And we've got some of those. We've got neighborhood centers. New communities can't afford to put up neighborhood centers. They can't have seven centers. They'll have one, two, or three. We've got low fees, which is both a handicap and an advantage. And we're an active community. Everybody in here it does things. We don't sit around and spend some time in the recliner. But we don't sit around a whole lot. But we have to be conscious of whatever we decide here has to be held against how are we going to be able to market this community, which is 60-some years old, has been run by volunteers, which is an amazing feat, not having some professionals in to run the place. So we've got to be conscious of the marketing aspect. You talk about money, finances, and that's, you know, everybody has to do that, but there are two sides to that knife. One is, you keep costs down, which is one of the advantages we have over all the other communities. The other is, you raise some income. We have, and I've just gotten the figures for this year, which are different from the figures that where you stopped in your, in your uh, presentation. We had, and we call them member visits, because it's not really a tenant. Every time you go into an activity, that's a member visit. If you go to exercise three times a week, you get counted three times a week. 
If you go swimming seven times a week, you get counted seven times. We have 1.3 million people going to the centers every year. And that used to be higher. We're still not recovered from the COVID fears. 1.3 million people going to the centers. There isn't a business or a shopping center wouldn't like to have that foot traffic. So we are doing a lot of things right. We've got to be looking at the positive parts of this operation as well as the things we don't like. So I'm just cautioning that there's a whole lot of aspects to look at this. We've got finance, we've got capacity, but we also got member usage. And if it's only 30%, they're making up 1.3 million. That's a whole lot of usage. And so we've got to keep that in mind while we're trying to sell these individual arguments about tennis and pickleball. And the one thing Sun City does not have that other communities do have and that we can fix is that we do not have a performing arts theater. Right. Yeah. And that's not just, and, that's, and, and I'm not involved in, in the theater. That's not just for the people that are doing the acting and building sets and all that. That's for the entire audience that comes to these things. So that's my pitch. You just got to keep a bigger view while we're fighting these little battles in between. OK, thank you, Norman. Are there any other com Oh, I'm sorry. And it's not just that we don't have a performing arts center. We do not have any theater within Sun City with that kind of stadium seating for any purpose whatsoever. And that to me is a, the biggest negative of Sun City. Okay. And I've said that since I moved here 10 years ago. It's such okay. a negative. We're, we're kind of getting off track a little bit now because I didn't want to open the meeting up to campaigning on certain things. <laughs> that, we'll have plenty of time to do that. So, yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, Karen did a presentation a couple weeks ago about um, differences in the plan. Mm -hmm. And one of them was um, everybody wanted a theater just like Sun City West. Yeah. And she said that was 10,000 square feet. How did we get to 35,000? I can't answer that. Bill, can you shed some and light? And should we get to 35,000? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Will we get to that? Will we find yes. that? Yes. Okay. Actually, that's a good question. Yeah. We should do real yeah. yeah. Now, the thing to keep in mind when people talk about the theaters, how much space is for seating, and that's always this much. Right. And then the support rooms behind it are three times that amount. Right. So you always have to ask yourself the context of what yeah. And Karen explained that theater was 10,000 with just under 3,000 people. Stage uh, audience. It had, it had all the rooms for ten thousand. Yeah. I just wonder how we how we got from here to there. I don't there. know, but you know and what? We need no. to get that far. You'd like to answer? Yes. 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 Does somebody know? Yes. <laughs> well, one of the things you just said, Karen said four or five times during her presentation, was people want a theater just like Sun City was. Yeah. That was not accurate. I was at both times that uh, that was presented in the afternoon and the evening. I never heard that. To make sure that I was correct, I went back and looked at the videos of it. The only thing one person said was they want people to go to a play at Sun City West to see what we're missing. Okay. That's a far cry from her saying over and over, just like Sun City West, because it was not accurate. Okay. Do, do we know what the seating is? Uh, maybe I missed it. The seating at Sun City West? Yeah, we do. Compared to? Four Bill, do you recall the seating? Okay. How much? 400. No, no, not at Sun City West. No, Sun City West was 290. It was 290. 240? Yeah, And they said that it's too small. So we're gaining a The people at Sun City West. Oh, okay. I just I want to understand this quick. So we're gaining about 150 seats from what they have to what we're gaining. we're proposing, but we're gaining 25,000 square feet to get those number of seats. Didn't I following that right? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Okay. I, I, don't, I just, I just, I just don't have the information. Right. But it's a darn good question. Yeah, I don't. I don't have. The yeah, excuse me. Uh, and I'm not. I'm not against the center. The, Performing Arts Center at all. Okay. I think that's number one. Yes. I, I would like to try to answer your question going back to the time when this first began, when the 
Performing Arts Council many years ago asked Jim Wellman to find a location in the community for a 900 seat theater. And long story short, he could not find a spot for that. And as a result, sometime later, that number was cut in half to about 450 seats. And that's where we've sort of been for quite some time. But we were to about the number today of 10,000 square feet. But you have to remember, in Sun City West, their storage is not where their theater is. Right. When you think about the size yeah. of the theater, when you say, why is it 35,000? Well, you've got the theater. You've got the costume rooms. You've got the costume rooms. You've got the place where the uh, shop. You have the shop. The building set. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you have flyer. You have all sorts of things that go into it. And then you have rehearsal space. Right. And you may have music space. And then when you start tacking all these things together, you find yourself sitting at a number around three. 35,000 square feet. Okay, so none of those things were included in Sun City West. And they're 10,000 square feet. No, they don't know anything about how Sun City no, West was No, what, what she's saying is much of their storage was not in that building, it was off site. Right, right. But that's a lot of storage, isn't it? Well, yeah. was nothing there, included in your 10,000 square feet? No, there's stuff. Oh, there, there was some. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was some, okay. but it was not all. Okay. That was the question. And if for those that saw the similar theater at Mesa Community College, sits around 275, raw numbers. They also have, for those of you that looked, that there was like 20 trailers stuck in the back that's used for storage of costumes and props and so forth. Mm -hmm. well, that theater was built 30 years ago and they don't have the space for it. But that's it just means that whatever you have for seating, there needs a, there's a lot of other space for yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. The other thing is, is the difference between their theater and what our proposal is. Ours includes uh, actually nine clubs that are considered performing arts, right. where theirs is only for the theater group. We all, and there's 11 performing arts clubs, and two of them said they wouldn't use it because it's too small. Mm -hmm. But nine of us would use it, so it's not just the players. Oh, yeah, it's got to make them aware. Yeah, that's right. Clear. And I one other uh, silly question. If I hear a fly rate, is yeah. there a fly rate we can put in or ask for? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I just want yeah. to say, that was one of the points I wanted to make is what Bill's making here. Please don't see this as player's place. No. This is know. a performing arts center with many groups. Right. And many more that might form that so want to perform. Here I, I default to my, my colleague, John, who's said many times, we build a program and then we build a building. Let's not build a building and put stuff in it. Let's figure out what we want to do. So we need a list of these programs and what their activities are. We have to make sure that there's that they can fit within, especially peak time, um, that we do that. So those are things that are still open for us to look and, at. And at one last comment. Yes. And back to the presentation itself. Oh my God. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed what you did. I really appreciate what you did. But I wanted to point out that when it came to players, you came down, and all of a sudden it was in a big, Red banner at the bottom was, is this really how we should best spend our money? Well, and I thought, that you didn't do that to any of the activities. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Well, well next time, you see me the next time. That's a conclusion. That's, that's well, a game watch out. I don't like to be talked over. That's oh. a conclusion that I reasoned. Okay, fair okay. enough. The intention was just to always draw us back. Got we got land constraint that we can put something in. We have a footprint. We're not buying any more land. We have a money constraint, and we're trying to satisfy members' demand. It's not unreasonable to say that uh, the member demand, which was in the original proposal <coughs> for the players, and Bill was the one that said this very early, that 35,000, 30,000 building was based solely on players. And that's what, and the money associated with that is 12 million bucks. I'm, all I'm doing is putting up in front of you what that decision was. When we get into alternatives, we're gonna live with that. I also said that the reason, and Bill kind of clarified it, the reason I wanted pickleball separate is because when I looked at 
the PIF number, it had 20 million bucks. And I said, holy smokes, that's a hell of a lot bigger than 12. And I said, we should probably drill into that. And I'll have probably a bigger red banner for that one. Um, but we, we have to keep that in context. Space, how much money we have, and what the user, users get use out of it, right? And so I, I'm only attempting to draw that out on, on slides. You, and you'll make your own decisions when, when we look at the alternatives. Is that the best way when you manage all three of those factors together? Yes, ma'am. From what I understand and what I, I have read, that um, they can save a lot of money if they go with steel construction for the pickleball courts and the multi-purpose auditorium. Because I don't know if they've looked at that, uh, pricing that out, because it seems to me that that's the way a lot of places are going right. with, with their yeah. auditoriums is a lot less money. And, you keep that thought because in a few weeks we're going to be there. Don't lose it. <laughs> we're not that's, all, that's, exactly, that's exactly the kind of alternatives we you need want to, to look at. It. So, <laughs> any thought, and that's a good example. There may, what are different ways to get the, to meet our needs? And that's a good example of one. And I have no idea what the answer is. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, back. I have a question. I'm not about any club anything. I have a question about our roadmap that came on our meeting agenda. Yeah. It said we were supposed to have an architect visit today. Is that still going to happen? No. 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 Okay. We, decided, we decided that it's premature. Right. Okay. We're not ready for that. And I'm going to go back to this one thing one more time so that we understand where we're going. The group wish list presentations on June 9th. Mm -hmm. Who are these people supposed to be, the groups? How do they find out they're supposed to be here? And who's doing what? That's a good question. Yeah, because they've got two weeks and they're not going to be happy people. Yeah. Well, what I would say is that for all affected parties at Mountain View. The Only at Mountain View. At Mountain View. Okay. Having your wish list in terms of the amenities. And then we can put those up. And decide whether some of those wish, what wish, wishes can't come through, right? That's what the alternatives will do. And where will they be? So if it's, if it's all interest, all interested parties of Mountain View, mm. or all parties currently at Mountain View, I think it's all interested parties. Yeah. Well, because if you're going gonna, to, who's going to pick those parties out, and how are they going to be notified? Who's they should be here. here. Mm -hmm. Are they here? I'm sorry. No. Know. Who else would be here? I think it's clubs affected. There, there, there could be. What happens at no. There are a lot of people that could be interested in performing arts. And your club not represented yeah. here. Uh, um, there could be. Uh, well, I brought up one last week. Um, the library is interested. Mm -hmm. um, Republicans and Democrats have not been contacted about anything to bring in candidates. Because they don't talk to each other. <laughs> Not to each other, but about each other. <laughs> I and mean, there's a lot of other groups that could be coming, could be interested in doing a performance or a, and a speakers you know, bureau or something. I mean, Do you have anybody you know, in the what, what path I went down that uh, a certain member had a very uh, acid reaction to yes. was build the program. Uh, because if you build a program, whether it comes to fruition or not, it at least gives you an idea of what you want to use it for. I look at it as a building, uh, as a four walls, a ceiling, maybe some windows. It's, a, it's only the people and the activities inside the building that are important to me. And so that's why I, I always focus on what are you going to do with it? And then build what you can can to accommodate that with your so you're looking at the for sure people, not the maybe might use it later. No, I think we should list the maybe might use it later. Okay, so when Anita and I were dealing with groups trying to find utilization, mm -hmm. potential utilization, one of the groups she talked with is the choral group, and they would be interested in doing presentation, you know, singing there, mm -hmm. and they would need you know, some risers, risers storage. and storage for those risers in order to be able to do a choral presentation. Yeah, okay. 
Tell Nobody them. here is from the choral group, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we? Um, we presented you a list of the performing arts groups, right? Right. Yeah. And if somebody would like to contact them. But uh, somebody once, I don't know who it was that spoke a couple weeks ago, said that all of these groups were contacted last fall. But I think the players that started player the thing or mm -hmm. and you had talk, and, and they something? all have ideas and things. And but nobody knows where that is. Yeah. 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 Is there any reports or anything? I asked for them and okay. they were not talking. Okay. I was yeah. on that committee. Yeah. Oh, we have somebody first time. I think Bill was too. I was too. Okay. Do you want to talk or do you want to do it? Are there reports or things that are on public of what that is that she's referring to? Yeah. Where is the info that came out of that? Right. Because when I was contacting groups, good point. And people were getting a little tense. Uh, it's, I've told them this, I've told them this, I've told them this, and I'm not telling them again. Okay. Don't ask so, me. Yeah. It, was there a report or something that... Well, there, there wasn't a report. We, we invited all the performing arts for uh, coffee and donuts, and we presented a PowerPoint presentation, and then we asked for feedback of how they would use it and who would use it, and... It was more or less a question and answer period. What was in the presentation material that was shown? He's got a PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. I saw um, the just PowerPoint. So we yeah, get it out here. The PowerPoint didn't have the discussion no. afterwards. Mm -hmm. which was a, the out of the discussion, there were 11 uh, clubs. It may be a rough draft of the facility, I think, yeah. is what we were working. Is it maybe possible for you to summarize that for the group? Yeah. As for what, what the output was? Because I can't. From the PowerPoint, I can see what was presented. Yeah, and we'll put that on the agenda because yeah. um, that's another good piece of information. If you put that together. And I think, honestly, like I'm, I'm here representing dance. Mm -hmm. I had no idea you guys met. And um, I'm sure there was somebody there from the club, yeah. but the it never series. trickled down to me, Dan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now Dan is my alternate here. And um, so we're trying to, I, I only saw this because it was publicized somewhere mm -hmm. that we had no one representing dance. And that's, that's not true. Right. Are you there? Are you there? I'm here. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was there once and I wanted to be on And I contacted sure. John for the same reason because yeah. I, you know, we need to have our voices so, heard. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I yeah. have a yeah. 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 large yeah. dance yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 which is a performing club. If you need any help. Totally different than. A dance floor, thank you. Yeah, that's my job. Yeah. So, so once again, who's calling these clubs? Who's telling them to show up? Yeah. Um, I, you know, what I would say, since the theater was designed by the Players Club for the Players Club, and you've met with those folks, if you give me the names of the people that you want me to contact, I will contact them and invite them. Thank you. Okay. Thank have, you. Have them make a presentation like this. Have that group present. Absolutely. That's what's missing here, everybody. Mm -hmm. The players people and all the performing people should make their own presentation and justify everything so everybody knows what's going on. Yeah. Well, We're just talking hearsay from the past history. A lot of people don't know that. Right. Put them up on mm -hmm. the stage and let them yeah. talk. Yeah. Answer questions. Well, and that's, uh, you know, that right. might be a good way to go. Before, before we get alternatives, is get everybody up and give them a chance to address the group. Dad, can we assume that you would be the one to lead the case on pickleball? And you, which one of you would do the, the performing arts center? Hey, Bill. Bill is going to do it. He's going Bill? to contact the performing arts center. Okay. Well, he's going to get the previous report that was right. But Bill said he would contact all those people to yeah, come on right. June 9th. Right. But then yeah. you, well, I'm not trying to do it. I need to go to the chair. So we got to get to the arts center. This is why you do it. Are we for sure? So please. Secondly, we need to hear from you. So we're, what we need to do is contact you to put your presentation. Oh, Tammy's <laughs> 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 
dance, Danny. I'm going to get up and dance. Okay, let's hold it for a second. Steve? just want to go back to the agenda for a moment. Um, I understand that it's not an architect, uh, but uh, it does also say here, packet lake view, pack utilization discussion. Jeff gave us some data for pack discussion. We're having a pack discussion already, okay, but has anybody thought about pack at Lakeview? I know that's an elephant in the room sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's going to come out. It's on the agenda. Yes. Yeah. How long do you want to go before you deal with that elephant in the room? Well, that's going to be on the topic. As soon as we finish the data, which hopefully will be one more meeting to cover additional information that was asked for today, then we're going to get into alternatives. I think we should start off with the pack. The pack at anywhere, anywhere, whatever they want. Okay, well, that's it's not going to be in Sun City, but it's stated here in the agenda. We're changing that, but all right, that's, <laughs> we're changing. that's the problem. <laughs> oh, one second, let me take her first. Uh, okay, now you say we're going to have one more presentation or whatever, and then I, we're going to go to alternatives. But what are we going to look at the data from these all these groups that are here that would come to play into the alternatives? You just kind of forgot about all that. Well, no. Some data was presented last week. Some data was presented this week. You haven't so, heard anything about the Aqua Fitness Club. You haven't heard anything and, and, about it. And some of this next week. And then when we get into the alternatives, when people are saying, hey, I need a pool for Aqua Club, okay, it'll be up to whoever that person is. Here's the number of people that are going to use it. This is what we think it's going to cost. And this is where we think it's feasible to put it. We have okay, to geography, cost, use. I understand that, but we're going to do all of that in two hours? Next no, week? we're going to spread it over the next four weeks. This is, this, I'm we're going to take our time. I'm sorry, I'm not talking about one of the alternatives. I'm talking about the data collection. Mm -hmm. How would you best suggest we do Well, I don't know, but it seems like we just skipped over it, and now we're going to go to alternatives. And as I said, I, I'm there, you're there, whoever else is there at Mountain View to present your cases to what you want to see at Mount View, or are we just talking about the Performing Arts Center? No. I'm not sitting here just for the Performing Arts Center. I'm to defend up to my club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I support you. Exactly. Oh, well. <laughs> 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 you turn your data into Sun City? I that do. How many people? Yes, so I have that, it right so here. Last year, 28,000. Okay, so that, that, the information is out there. But however, the numbers I get directly from each club, each um, instructor, is not the same number that ends up going over to Bill's organization. Well, let me That's suggest. Well. Let me suggest this. Uh, if we want to change the next presentation, I'll send out invitations to people that I think want to present uh, how they would use. Uh, and you can you can have the fun of getting up. Oh, Tammy, don't, 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 don't be closing your eyes. <laughs> I, I see a lot of people going, oh. Don't look down at oh, me. Tammy, you can I make a suggestion? Could you contact the club's office and ask them to do a mail blast to all of the clubs? Saying, yes. But, and probably 102 of them could care less. <laughs> but see, uh, seriously, well, but say, use. could your club possibly, do you see your club in the future possibly having an interest in using the Performing Arts Center? Yeah, I, I think we can do that. And, or not. I mean, there may be some club out there that we never, I saw one man in this room, heard one man in this room, said, you know, the Vintage Car Club might be interested to do a thing on a Friday night with a car meet and have show movies. That was me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out a reason to use it. Would I ever have thought of calling a vintage car club to see if they would have an interest? Yeah. That's why maybe if they would send out a blast, maybe there'd be somebody out there we can't think of. Well, let's get let's get on that. And you know, now next, what we got to talk about next week. Next week is Memorial Day. It's the Friday before Memorial Day, and nobody and nobody's here. We're we're going to propose not having a meeting. So that'll be an yes. agenda change. No <laughs> yeah. Too popular. Right. So now we're going to have Karen on June 9th with, with clubs. With some other clubs, we'll see. Okay. More to fit it in for two hours than 
Yeah. It'll be the following week as well. June 2nd, also. Yeah. Yeah. And when will we pick up the data that we don't have, like from Aqua Fitness? We, we have we have a lot of data. But she said it's not even close. Well, she said it's not matching. Okay, and then it would it would if some there's a, the information that I have is the best that it's available to us in management. If there's other information that a particular group wants to present because it adds to the decision that they then they're free to stand up here and present it. Okay. Absolutely, we got plenty of time to do it. Those other decisions just be just. Beyond not just how many people, but yes. do you want a speaker? How do you want a full range? How's it going to work out for you? That, it sounds to me like that's your choice. You get up okay. here. Okay, hang on one moment. We have what John said was a perfect example of what goes on. He said we're thinking about what we could do to use that at if it was a theater. So that's what's happening. Everybody's trying to think, oh, I'll do this, I'll do that. It's not that I do it now at Mountain View and we need something bigger and better. Uh, I'll think about it. We want to have a bigger and better theater. So I'll think about something I would do there. Why don't they just do it at, say, Sundial or wherever it is that they are doing whatever Those they are do. And Mountain View <coughs> has room to enlarge maybe the auditorium back uh, stage area there they have enough room why can't they just put another area for their wood and their their costumes and their dressing rooms and whatever on the uh, building that's already there instead of a grand big huge thing that's uh no, that house no, those will be alternatives we'll, we'll, we'll rush out i guess one question I, you have you had your hand up in there well, I think Bill may be in the green cat for the now. I just was wondering if Bill, if, if it wasn't on a Friday at 2 o'clock, but if Bill could, uh, it could be another time, if anyone was interested in seeing the presentation that you did on the center that you shared with the clubs when they all came for donuts and coffee, yeah. could we see that PowerPoint presentation? That sure. presentation and, that, I think that it's the same plan, right? We have this room 24-7 from now until September 29th. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to, we can have sub-meetings, you know, whatever. And it might be nice to do an email blast that we've chosen Wednesday at 10 a.m. Actually, I'm gardening then, so another time. <laughs> <laughs> so that we can come and see the South Park presentation for the proposed if the plans are still viable and this is what we're discussing, if this is the, if this is what we're discussing, if, if it's current, it would be very, very interesting to me uh, to see the presentation, and I'm sure it would be interesting to other people to see it. Could we just put it on the website with um, the drop down yeah. that you talked about for the SCC? There's an idea. Jean? So we can watch it in. We have the ability to do that now. That's a great That's idea, too. Mm -hmm. But you don't have the wish list. No, you don't have the wish list. No, but no, she's referring yeah, to the previous yeah, presentation. I know I've been to Mountain View several times. Just, you know, you go to the window and you sign in, and then you just say, hey, does anybody have what it's going to be? Are there plans anywhere? And you know, everybody says, no, 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 I don't know. It would be really great to see what we're talking about. Yeah, that, that's, that's a deficiency we have is we, are, we can all draw stick figures. And, but when it comes to, you know, creating- there, You I, know, I, if there was some, something that was that organized story. already that there had a previous reference to, I'm like, let's load it and watch it right now. Load it up, let's see it. Okay, okay. one moment. Yes. Oh, yeah, she was, uh, mm -hmm. oh, she's got us. I, I just want to emphasize again, the architects had a lot of artistic stuff done. They were very close to some, you know, something that could be rough sent to the board when all this got stopped. Okay. All of that the architect has. I've right. seen the presentation because I'm on the one who represented players right. in that meeting. Right. They have the sight lines that we were talking about erroneously last week. They have where the tech booth is going to be. They have, you know, seats. 
how it's going to be available to all people with any kind of handicap. All of them. It's all there. Okay. That's why you can see, see it. This is not stick figures. This is where you, you, you would want to go deeper into it. It's with the architects. Like I said, you spent $400,000 on it already. <laughs> We have spent $400,000 on these plans already. Okay. okay. So, so your suggestion is? is okay. Your suggestion is to have the architect in to go over option two. Yeah. And could yeah. we see option one? There are no plans. Excuse me. There are no plans for one. Excuse me. Yeah, there are. We have, that's not true. We have architect drawings. Are you talking about a, a, a presentation? A presentation? That the yeah. architects gave just to the players' club? No, just to all to management and to the players' club. Basically. You were invited. Okay. And so we're there four, four meetings. Two meetings. Oh, we yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 two board members were also there. Right. So John, we can put that on the agenda. Oh, I think that's yeah. 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 Okay. 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 There's one other thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So to me, that is a massive loss of funds and facilities that we already had in play that were not going to be lost before this change. That's why I would like to see the architect come in and show the original conception, and the, tell and, and why the they made one. the change, and if those changes could have been done in a different way that wouldn't have wiped it all out from existence, all of these things. That's my major issue. Okay. So Number two, Bill, wait, wait, oh, wait a second, Bill. Yes. One more thing. In the thought of moving the Performing Arts Center to Lakeview, I know you're saying we're going to just put that on the date somewhere, but in order to have that, we need to know, is it even a viable option? I mean, has anybody looked at the land there? Is it buildable? I know in that whatever was done up here by some guy who counted parking spaces and stuff, yeah, he yeah. said Lakeview yeah, was off the table because there were retaining water retention issues that could not be dealt with for a performing arts center. A, a so simple one. To make that choice, is, I mean, we need to have somebody actually in the know have an idea. Is it even I'm, not, I'm not going to do that because I don't know, but I, right. I have heard from people that geographically it could fit. Now, whether it can overcome other constraints on the property, I can't answer that. That would have to be looked at. But in terms of just taking a picture and putting a box on it, yeah, yeah it'll somewhere fit. Somewhere before we look at that as an alternative, because we know it is a viable alternative right. in Mountain View, we need to know is it even a, a viable alternative at Lakeview. Because yeah. it's great to say, I'd love to have it right. here, it would be beautiful, so, but... Yeah, okay. Yes. Just, just uh, real quick, I know Bill's next, but on, her, on Susan's point, if you go in the other room on the bulletin board, right on the other side of this wall, I posted from a prior long-range planning person that's no longer in the committee, he took the aerial drawings and he showed where you could fit things theoretically, okay? Correct. I think this is what John has been saying to some of us. Start coming up with your conceptual renderings, Just drawings, plot sketches. Piece. This is a great tool okay? to do that. And we already have somebody who started on this a few years ago, okay? And it's from the Long Range Planning Committee, person that listened to everybody at Mountain View during the forums and the meetings. It's right on the other side of the wall if you want to take a look at some ideas. Okay, so we've already started that. Okay. Sorry. And that's great. Bill, it's just we'll get there. Okay. Okay. Bill was this. Okay. Bill. Just to clarify Bill? on option one versus two. So two was driven by the community. Okay, so after option one was presented, there were uh, you know, membership uh, overwhelmingly, I couldn't tell you the numbers, it's not like hundreds, but there are people who said that the ingress and egress for handicap spacing was not adequate. Okay, so they also said that the closest distance, because right now when you go to Mountain View, you can get pretty close to the, the main entrance there. So that was brought up as well, so the parking was not such that you had a lot of parking spaces that were within steps of the, uh, the uh, main entrance. So that was a big thing. And then I know that uh, there was an issue with respect to uh, handicap parking that we had to address. And then a third thing was, and this was a really big thing, it was access control. So we talked about this today. Yes. You know, now it's so difficult to run the pickup hall to check in. And so to centralize access control, the movement of the building, building uh, really facilitated that. Okay, so that everybody who needed to check in could check in very easily versus having to walk their cars. Okay, and then finally, uh, the other thing is, is that now it opened up 100,000 square feet of space where we could put in, you know, at the time they were talking about putting in a handicap accessible uh, mini golf, uh, but pickleball, and so it kind of opened up this whole space for that. So it really had nothing to do with keeping the pool open. We were actually can still do. We could have done that, but we made a decision not to do that. It was perfect. Why would we keep the pool open when there's construction going on? Just to see if it makes sense. So those were the main drivers behind it. So the pool closer, the pool is going to be closed. Yes. Yes. We we have two options that Alston had presented. One right. was to keep it open. The other was to not. To, to not keep it open is actually a cheaper alternative. Yes. Because now they're coming in and tearing everything down at the same time versus waiting for the twice. Right. So it became a cheaper option. So we said, you know what, let's not keep it open. Let's tear it down and stuff. Bill, thank you for that. Clearing up a, a number of things that people were thinking about. Appreciate that.
Yes, ma'am. Uh, my neighbors and friends have one question. When does the first shovel hit the ground? Let's assume we come to this major agreement and it goes to the board and they say, because we're doing this and that's it, we're done. When do we dig the hole? I can't answer that question, I don't know. You don't have any idea? No. no. Okay. Could it be another five years? Another, what would, what would change? Oh, I, I, you know, we don't know because we don't know what we're building. So how can you say when it's going to get done? That's, we don't know. We don't have the, are we building buildings or lit? We don't know yet. We haven't got there. Okay. I, be just, it, yeah. I, I would say it's something we'd definitely like to start next year. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're only looking for a shovel full, we could probably do that. You have three women here who are driving in us, and we all live on the same street. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to break you up. Okay. okay. <laughs> you, you can go next. You've got two minutes. Oh, I'm going to go next. John, did I hear you say we're not having meetings next Friday? No, no meeting next Friday. Uh, the only other thought that has occurred to me is that we do have uh, various groups with various interests. And when you want to get the, the wish list done, would it be helpful to have separate meetings with separate groups and list them here so everyone, is not going to be hidden, everyone can see this group wants this, this group wants that, but not everybody has to sit and listen to Dave ramble on about tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Or to send you back an email with their wish list attached. Yeah, that that is compile, combine oh, into. Or bring, it, bring your information and bring data. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're, we're getting close to the hour of four yes. o'clock, which we're yeah. going to bring to meeting. Okay. So I'll and take just not, a couple more questions. Yes, ma'am. About the pool closure for that. It's, it's again, it's just like the pickleball thing. Sure, it's going to be inconvenient for people. Yeah. But you know, it's like when they close any pool. For, um, no, I mean, that's it's the same thing happens to everybody. Yeah, right. So it's like, so what? And as far as the, why are we even talking about um, Lakeview as an option for the performing arts place? That's another whole big problem over there. You start messing over there, you're going to mess up the, a lot of people just love that, the uh, Lakeview, the, um, just the shape of it, the, Everything. Why would you want to mess up something like that? Okay. So, when, yeah. okay. Let's wrap up. The purpose of today's meeting was to talk about the data and make sure we understood it. What data was missing that we could add. I have a list based on the comments. We'll do that. I didn't want to get into exploring pros and cons of alternatives. Otherwise, we'll be here all weekend. So, that part of the discussion is to do it. I On a positive note that I think everybody should know because uh, Norm brought up uh, the fact that we're one third of the people yep. are using it. That is usually much better than you could get in a fitness club like EOS where it's 10 to 20 percent. So if we're 30 percent, we're far ahead of what normal fitness centers get to Thank use. You. Okay. That's good. Yeah. And uh, Mike, I have a question also. I noticed that Alan Kleinhans is in the back. Those of us that are not going to be able to attend because of summer vacations, right. I just want to check if we're going to have video conferencing capabilities. Well, if you use Teams, Teams would be an option for That's what I, I need to talk to you about how we get that on that machine. So simple. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. 30 we're seconds. Not, yes, yes, we're not meeting Memorial Day weekend. Are we meeting the first week of June, June 2nd? Yes. It's uh, not on yet. June 2nd. Every Friday. What happened? Every Friday. Is that enough? I would say at the moment the answer is yes, right? We're still trying to get people available to present certain things. Yeah, we need to change that. Next week, no meeting next week. We'll do the following. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. How are you?
copy written production of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.